they do. Okay, well, thank you so much for um, adding to the Jamboard, engaging in that, and feel free to continue to add. Um, yeah, Sam, I added an agenda. I hope that's okay. Um, yeah, I just want to forecast um, how we're going to spend the next 40 minutes together. Um, or actually, no, we have more time than that. The next less than hour together. Um, so first, we want to share on um, a background on this project. Um, this workshop is part of a a longer term project that we're calling phase one and phase two right now. So I'm going to share um, a bit of background on phase one, which is the analysis of this curriculum right here, Google's Be Internet Awesome curriculum. And then Sam's going to share um, where we are now and what we're calling phase two, which is thinking about um, a framework for um, doing that sort of analysis with media corporation creative products. And then we're gonna do an activity together in breakout rooms um, where we're going to co-analyze a Be Internet Awesome lesson. It's kind of like what we did for the analysis. It's fun, I promise. Um, and then we'll come back together uh, for some discussion questions and a debrief. So I'll, I'll start with um, giving some background. So we've been, we've been working on this project for over two years, um, which feels like a long time ago. Um, but we were first introduced to this curriculum, um, Be Internet Awesome at the 2019 Namely Conference. Um, and if you were an attendee at Namely that year, you could walk away with this curriculum, which is like, a, a fairly a thick book. Um, and then some of the materials in that picture there is like some, I think there were some stickers and some stuff like if you were a parent, some like what you could tap into at home. Um, and we were really curious about this product. And as a, at the time I was a middle school digital and media literacy teacher. And I honestly had never heard of this, um, which was interesting to me. Um, and so the fact that this was being presented um, that this was available at a media literacy conference, we um, really wanted to take this seriously as a, a media literacy resource, a media literacy text. Um, and we wanted to do a pretty deep dive into what is this curriculum? Who is it meant for? Um, what's being taught? Um, what is Google's role um, as depicted in the curriculum? Um, and how, I guess like how current does it feel? We were curious about like, does this feel like it's keeping up to date with um, some like the controversies and the, the concerns that um, the public was starting to have about, well, we've been having, but you know, at the time and continue to have about um, big tech. And so really just how can we evaluate the quality of this curriculum? And so when we think about that, um, we were thinking about the curriculum, two dimensions of the curriculum, the content and the pedagogy. And the content, of course, a curriculum is going to communicate certain concepts, certain values, certain skills. And we definitely want to do a deep dive on what the curriculum was communicating. Um, but as media literacy educators, we're also really interested in the pedagogy um, that's used within the curriculum because that's so important to us that media literacy is not just it's not just certain content, it's also how, it's, it's a way of teaching. So we were curious like what sort of instructional practices um, are allowed for via the curriculum. Um, and you know, in a Frarian sense, like what, how is power shared within the curriculum that use, uh, within the classroom that uses this curriculum? What sort of relationship between teacher and student, student and student, what kind of co-creating a meeting can happen via this curriculum? And where is, is there opportunity for student inquiry um, throughout? So um, it was important to us in our deep dive that we considered both um, content and pedagogy. And so as Sam mentioned, we have a paper that, um, that will hopefully be out soon that's gonna dive further into this um, analysis, but just to share after conducting a systematic text analysis, um, we found I, what we would say um, five findings, um, main themes, um, and I'll just go through them. Um, so first of all, um, we found that the concepts felt a bit outdated and inappropriate for seven to 12 year olds. And I'll just say the curriculum is meant for second to sixth graders. And as someone who taught sixth graders, 
I, I don't know how a single curriculum can be appropriate for both second graders and sixth graders. Like that just feels like a huge range. Um, so that is um, curious, um, but there's also a certain sense of um, some of the concepts just feeling a little bit outdated and a big example being the focus on email um, and spam in email. Um, and not that that isn't important, but that's, there's not many second graders using email, for example. And Sam and I reflected on the fact that spam filters and email have real, that's a technology that's really advanced quite a bit. So is that really, given the limited time, is that really so important to talk to seven to 12 year olds about? Um, the second theme is not really surprising. The curriculum positions responsibility for safety um, solely on the user. And that's not surprising given like digital citizenship curriculum in general, personal responsibility is like first and foremost. Um, and so related to theme three, it's related um, to a more general simplification of concepts. Um, such as uh, the control users have over personal, how personal information is shared online. Um, this curriculum, like a lot of similar curriculum, talks about like your digital footprint. That's a metaphor that's used um, quite a bit. Then the sense being that you have control over what becomes part of your digital footprint. But, you know, moving on to theme four, it's a bit rich coming from Google um, that. Uh, again, his business practice is, um, you know, reliant on collection of user data for various purposes. Um, and, and not just related to Google's larger business practices, but specifically um, within the classroom as well. Um, it's considering how um, ubiquitous Google Classroom is, um, and there's really great research coming out about um, uh, looking at platform pedagogies and like there was an article written by Ben Williamson and others and I can't remember the other name the other authors names but think uh, analyzing Google Classroom via its API which is that bit of code that allows teachers to connect Google Classroom to third-party apps um, and the way in which Google's terms of service does not transfer to that third-party app, but it's not clear at all that when you attach a third-party app to Google Classroom that you are going outside of what you've agreed to with Google. Um, so it's problematic coming from Google. But then finally, um, within the curriculum and then also related to um, the some teacher training modules online, um, the curriculum wants to make it very clear that anyone can pick this up and use it. You don't need to have any background knowledge to, to implement this. Um, and we question that, like just kind of in general, like should, I mean, is that, is that really what we want to say? Like you don't need any background knowledge to just pick up this curriculum. Um, but, you know, we sort of walk away thinking, well, what can we really expect a classroom teacher who maybe their administrators is asking, is requiring them to address digital literacy standards. Like in Massachusetts, um, where I'm at, that's, we have these digital literacy standards and classroom teachers, especially in elementary school, need to address them. And some feel really, some teachers feel really anxious about that and ill-prepared. Um, so can we really, um, can we expect teachers to to, to have a thorough background of background information to do the analysis that we just did. Um, and I should say our third collaborator is Renee Hobbs on this analysis. And so it took the three of us two months to thoroughly evaluate this curriculum. And so after this phase, we were really reflecting together, okay, now what? Um, especially because Google, just taking this one curriculum, they update this curriculum and an update came out um, this summer. So what's, how can we, now, now what is basically our question, and I'll turn over to you, Sam. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. And so, is, particularly given you know a lot of us have shared the same constraint around time in evaluating these materials. So, um, what we set out to do is um, try and figure out a way to build a framework or some sort of assessment tool that allows us to navigate the complexities of these tech products and uh, these tech curricula uh, that are developed by not just ed tech companies, but media companies. So what kinds of questions do we need to be asking 
um, in order to help us understand what parts of the curricula or uh, educational product is helpful to us, um, what do we need to be aware of, um, and what, what might be missing. And that's really complex too when you think about how quickly uh, media evolves these days. It's really difficult, even if you are a journalism scholar, to keep up in you know what is the what is the latest in journalism and you know tech, the tech sector changes with lightning pace, right? So, um, so really, our goal here is not to kind of you know build um, build something that's going to just let us superficially reject materials, but just to understand what parts of the materials can be helpful to us, what parts are red flags, and what might we need to supplement or uh, in what ways might this material be a supplement. So we looked at a bunch of different frameworks for evaluating um, media literacy curricula and, um, and digital literacy learning materials. Um, and we really liked this one um, from uh, Fellini, which of course has its own pros and cons, right? Just like any tool. Um, but we we really started to think um, while this while this framework is certainly very thorough and um, considers both curricula and pedagogy and um, the context of the classroom and the learners very well, um, what we thought was was missing were a few important uh, contextual aspects to do with the creator of corporate products. So we thought it was really important to kind of create something additional or something specific for this context that really addresses the instructional, educational, and social environments um, where these products are, are produced and consumed. Um, so industrial contexts, um, which we found was most often uh, missing in evaluation uh, methods or tools, um, includes things like, you know, uh, does, the, does the curriculum uh, creator offer uh, transparency around how products related to the, the educational uh, product is, um, is monetized? Um, educational questions, you know, for example, what is the relationship between the learners and the curriculum designers products? So we, what we're really trying to do here is create sort of a supplement in asking uh, a, a tool to help us in very con time constrained ways. Um, how can we go about, you know, quickly and efficiently asking the right questions about these kinds of products? Um, so I'll, I'll reinforce that this is a framework in progress, and today we are all going to kind of put this framework to use together and uh, just see how it goes. And uh, we're going to, am I supposed to be doing this, Michelle? Um, I think I am. I love you. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> um, okay, so we are going to break into breakout rooms for, um, I think we said 10 minutes, and I think that feels right still. Um, and we're going to basically um, analyzed together a lesson from this curriculum. Um, and I, this, um, this lesson in particular is from the update that came out this summer. So it's not part of the evaluation that we did. So we, we, we've taken a look at this, but it's not like we have this like deep, um, this deep knowledge, we had this deep analysis of this particular lesson, which is why we want to do it with you all um, to, to see what um, what you have come up, what, what you see in this lesson. Um, and so we're going to go into four breakout rooms. Um, and basically in very classic media literacy um, uh, uh, style, ask what, what is here and what is missing. Um, we have a prompt that relates to the, um, relates to the framework. Um, discuss given Google's position in the digital marketplace and as the financiers and publishers of this product and the role of its products in representation, transfer, construction of knowledge, what's here and what's missing. Um, but really like what's here and what's missing? What do you notice? Um, the, the tiny URL on the left-hand side is the, um, uh, is, is to the lesson, but yeah, we can put that in the chat so you can go directly there. Um, and we also chose this lesson because it's around search, which we thought was particularly from Google. Like, let's look at this together. Like what is, what's in this lesson about search from this Google product? Um, so 
you can every there's four four boards for each group, um, and you can add sticky notes or just text um, to this table. Um, are there any questions? Have I been unclear about anything for this? Okay, Nolan, yeah. Yeah, um, <clears throat> thank you very much for uh, the presentation. Uh, I'm just uh, um, confused on one aspect. Are we applying the framework as you two, have, or sorry, you three have designed it? Um, or are you asking us what's there and what's missing um, based from our own to frameworks or analysis? Um, I would say either or when we come back to discuss one of our questions is what do you think about this framework that we are proposing. Um, so please like revisit it and consider it see if it's going to help you to notice anything, um, but um, we're not being prescriptive about this what's here and what's missing. Um, based on the brain in your head works too. And also your own experiences. I, mean, I know a lot of you have done a lot of research in this area. And so Michelle and I, especially being um, newer scholars, we are very excited to, of course, share this with you, but to, to benefit from your experience as well. So please do bring, bring that into this exercise. Thank you. Any other questions? Cool. All right, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna open the breakout rooms, and uh, it looks like there'll be five to six people per breakout room, which is a lot. <laughs> but we didn't really know how many people would be um, part of this session, but um, breakout rooms are not recorded, so feel free to express your thoughts as as, uh, as freely as you'd like, um, and we'll give you a, a couple of um, minutes warning before we bring you back. All right. Okay, so we're at 4.09. So we're doing 10 minutes total on this, yeah? Yeah, I think that still feels right, right? Yeah, we can keep an eye on what's happening sticky-wise, so. I'm going to pause the recording. Oh, not stop it. Thank you. Great. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that was uh, thought provoking and fun and infuriating, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and I apologize that I didn't. I, I meant to say, take a few minutes to actually read the lesson before talking. So, but I assume you all figure that out. So, thank you for. For that yeah um, we've all we've all been to a lot of rodeos at this point so yeah. um so would a representative from each group um care to unmute and just share um maybe a couple highlights or high level or read off your sticky notes or just take a moment to summarize what went on in there and we'll start with group one sure uh, michelle i'm happy to sort of um Thank start you. off for our group um we actually all were we were actually pretty concerned by this um and nolan and i in particular we we had a good laugh that nolan and i ended up in the same group because we actually had done research on corporate mm -hmm. involvement in media literacy in the classroom so we are already kind of primed and like fired up to have trouble with this um mm -hmm. you know in terms of trying to sort of think about the the what's here, it's good that they mentioned that algorithms are created by people. I, it was harder for me to find the what's here without also finding the problematic with it. So mm -hmm. there was, you know, the leg, the language is casual and friendly, I, I, but I do find it concerning that they refer to the quantity of information as crazy. Like, I think that that's a problematic mm -hmm. term. Um, 
it's clearly techno utopian. Like there's absolutely a celebration and it's very kind of male celebration. Um, and uh, the idea, oh, sorry, we've got a couple here that somehow we were also a little bit of struggling, but lie, um, the use of the word lie uh, was there, um, but again, something that, so it was easier for us to talk about what was missing and what was problematic. Um, clearly, and you brought this up, there's a discussion of search, but there's absolutely no mention of Google. Like there is zero, and I've, Nolan and I, and I'm sure others have looked across their curriculum and there's absolutely zero self-reflexivity, which is deeply, deeply problematic. Um, I also find it deeply concerning that there's zero discussion of data mining. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's this line of like, don't worry how algorithms work yeah. for now. It's super suspicious and patronizing. Um, there's no talk about who are the people that um, create algorithms. The idea that you could get wrong or inappropriate information isn't discussed. There are images that are scary. I mean, maybe there aren't going to be scary images based on the examples that they provide. Pizza sharks oh i guess sharks can have some scary images but you know we know from reading sophia noble that you can get scary images just by not finishing a statement um there's no discussion of how the search results are designed rather than um random um information not be might not be what you need um and then there's also this assumed knowledge right um there's no well big picture from us there's nothing, no discussion about how this legitimizes corporate access to children, right? Again, particularly with data mining. And that was, that was a struggle that Nolan and I both had in our research was that all the corporate media literacy work is deeply embedded in data mining, which is like, we, that needs to be a bigger conversation. And, and maybe less of a, of a note to end on here, if my righteous indignation, um, but there's also this assumed knowledge about the premise of the terms used, like using their mm -hmm. example of a shark, like, and Michelle, going back to your comment about like, can you really have a curriculum for second through sixth grade? Sure, mm -hmm. probably most young people know what a shark is, but why would you start with different types of sharks? How about starting with what is a shark? Like the only, maybe one might think that the way to understand different types of sharks is to start by understanding what is a shark and then obviously building up the abstraction from there. So um, we were, we were pretty negative about the whole thing. Thank you for that really thorough accounting. Appreciate it. Um, someone from group two want to unmute we thought it was a pretty useless lesson we've got a bunch of students sitting around working with paper um, we thought about alternatives for example putting one of those search terms into google and then into bing to see what the different search results might be and that would help us start to understand what a search engine is and what an algorithm might be but uh, we were struck by how safe it was. Most of the terms we decided that farmer was probably the most contentious topic that they could research. So they had, they had made sure that they could be politically clean and safe. Uh, there was no evidence of social justice, and I guess we shouldn't really expect it. Good point about the like the lack of like actual like technology experience that is missing throughout. Um, and I think that's probably intentional, like, cause not every classroom is gonna have access to a device, um, but it's definitely of note that what's missing. Thank you, Neil. Um, someone from group three, wanna unmute? Sure, um, this is Rachel, I can do that. So um, some things that haven't already be haven't already been said that I'll share. Um, for what's here um, and sort of a challenging or problematic component of what's here is that the categories that students were asked to think about are actually the categories that Google uses to return their search results. So it's like, mm. um, I forget exactly what they were. Um, website image video map. And so we went and looked at other search engines um, while we were here, we're all doing our searching um, and Bing doesn't use those categories and DuckDuckGo doesn't use those categories. So it's kind of implicit or implied that Google is how search engines work, right? It's, it's built into that. Um, and I mean, I, 
I know it's already been said, but I really have to echo it. Like, don't worry about how algorithms work. Cool, that's what this is. Um, and, uh, you know, we talked about it. There actually may have even been a little bit of an opportunity for them to get into that, where if you have different pairs of kids working together, mm -hmm. you could talk about how, well, this pair of kids came up with different results than this pair of kids. Well, you know, and you could even kind of illustrate how, depending on where you're doing the searching or what ideas those people are using, you could have started to introduce the idea of algorithms, but like it was just totally avoided, which was, you know, an unfortunate um, waste of opportunity. So I think that's what we have to add from what was already said. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, yeah, and, and group four, does somebody wanna unmute? Sure, I, I, I'll i jump in on this. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, I mean, pretty much everything's been said, right? Why were we always the last group? All the good points have already been made. Um, you got this, Natasha. Yeah, I mean, the, the lack of transparency and um, is, is really, it's not shocking, but it is. We were talking about in our group, um, and this might be a more relevant point to bring up as it hasn't already been raised, but think about the pressure that the, that the, the teachers are under to you know, have some kind of lesson in their um, classes right now. And, you know, if this came across your desk, you might be like, oh yeah, I'll use this, um, you know? So, I mean, you, you, on the one hand, you can't blame them, right? Because they are, um, you know, they're under pressure to, to, to have these lessons in their classes, you know, it's being mandated across the country, but without proper context, I think it's terrifying to think that this could end up in classrooms and nation, not just nationwide, but perhaps globally as well. I think everything else on there has already been raised to a certain extent. So um, unless you want to add anything, Jane, I think Ralph's gone, so. No, <laughs> you, you, good job, good job. Right. Yeah. Thank you though. Thank you. No, I think it's, it's, I, I do, I have so much sympathy and empathy for, um, like f for the need for this. Um, so, I, which is why Sam and I really want to take this seriously. That's correct. I don't know. And that's an excellent, um, segue into our discussion questions. And again, you know, uh, our goal here is to build a framework that helps busy educators say to themselves, here's something that my administrator wants me to use. Let me unpack this for a minute. And there's no better group of people who are thinking critically about these kinds of products to help um, inform where we go from here. So our first question to you is, what was it like using this framework? What was beneficial? And what were some of the limitations? And what are some things that you pulled from your own experiences that we may not have considered? I'll just open that up to anyone who feels inclined. I'm sorry, could you, can you can you clarify, maybe this is like sort of a one-off question, but what do you mean by framework? You mean this assignment or working in this construct? Um, I suppose working in the construct. So like we said before we started the, um, before we started the uh, exercise to clarify uh, Nolan's question, um, did, did, did we want you guys to use the framework that we put together that we've been working on? And I'll, I'll bring that back up. And we sort of put those into the questions themselves into the prompt on the page. So from looking at an industrial uh, context, educational and social context, was this a helpful framework um, or did you not use it? Which may well, may well have been the case. I, I, I would bring, I would probably, I mean, I don't teach second through sixth grade, so you know, but if it if I were bringing this into my college level media literacy class, I would probably only bring it in as a problematic, not as a um, as a benefit or as a solution. I would bring it in to do a real um, meta analysis of the curriculum and what it's leaving out and how it's um, it's it's um, it's brutal for teachers. I mean, it's it's I would I I don't know I would pretty much only use it for the negative. 
And I don't know, Michelle, maybe we'll use it next semester in media literacy for that. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> you can you can come in and guest lecture one day or more than one day and we can, you know, kind of talk about the, you know, problematize this further. I would love that. And That's I'll say, awesome. you know, the results of our like once this article is is published, it's it's quite scathing. And, and Michelle and I are on the same page where we would never introduce this to a classroom. But what we're trying to do here is take a step back and when we did a similar exercise over the summer um, with K-12 educators, we asked them questions like, well, you know, how, you know, what, what would you do to evaluate something like this? And they said things like, oh, go to common sense media or, you know, other third party, you know, evaluators. And we're thinking like, okay, but how can we, how can we help you do this yourself? <laughs> so that's, that's, that's really what what we're trying to get at here. So, I mean, like the rest of you, I doubt any of us would use any parts of this in the in the classroom, but we are trying to also, we're trying to lead teachers to, what is it, lead, teach them how to fish? I don't know. <laughs> um, Jamie and then Nolan. Hi, um, as a secondary teacher, I so I'm looking at the one you're posting right now. I think it's great. I really, you know, I'm on a sabbatical, but we've been looking at different curriculum so much in the past two years, of course, like everything was sort of, ah, let's try all of this. Um, but, you know, there, I think that your framework is good. It helps, it's simple enough. You've got just a few questions per thing. Um, when, we, when we were in the group and we did what's here, what's missing, that was also nice because um, if you're just doing that for a quick discussion, it leaves it wide open. You don't, but you're not just throwing out everything you hate about it or everything you really, I don't know what I'm saying. It's the last session of the weekend, but um, I think that your framework was helpful for me as a high school English teacher. This would really help me and I was department chair. Um, looking at, you know, people bring things in and they say, this looks great, or this has to do with, you know, social emotional learning, or look at this or look at that. And, you know, and these questions really help what current events are relevant, you know, different things that really help people examine it. Um, I don't know if that made any sense, but you've got my vote. I would like a copy. <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you so much for the feedback. Um, Nolan, then, then Rachel. I guess, um, I don't know, if, again, I'm teaching higher ed, so this this may be out of school, but um, thinking about your, your question of evaluation, I'm thinking we're at Critical Media Literacy Conference, and um, Jeff Scher was integral in, in designing this thing. Obviously, his work with Kellner, I'm sure if he was in the room, he would say something about um, considering how this um, exercise speaks to the politics of representation, um, Looking at looking at either the ideology of the assignment or how it speaks about ideology or if it does at all, um, and then more broadly, I guess um, issues of power. One of the things we really didn't didn't talk about in our in our room that kind of occurred to me when you're going through um, this really is like a, a disempowering exercise. Um, you just put the information in the search bar and it gives you what you want. Um, you don't have to think; it does all the work for you. Um, so. Some, somewhere in the framework, I'm thinking of that. I also think it's very interesting um, where you all found this assignment too, like at a NAMLI conference. So um, part, part of it is what motivated, and you have this in your framework, what motivated them to create this, but also the context in which it's delivered. Um, you know, I speak personally that um, if a textbook um, salesperson comes to my office door, mm -hmm. I, I tend to be weary of them because they're trying to sell me a product. <laughs> and same thing if I'm at a, uh, a conference is funded by the very folks who make this um, content. I'm a little weary of it. So maybe something in there about that. I know it's not specific, but it just came to mind. No, I love that. Yeah. Like, where did you find this? Even just that question, I think um, it will, will force people to think. Thank you for that. Um, Rachel. Thank you. So um, maybe this is because I kind of, my training is in political economy and when i was um, an elementary and middle school teacher i had to engage with ja biztown and junior achievement which like brings bile deep from my gut into my throat with disgust um so when i look at this what i'm seeing in the framework which i really like and i think the industrial component is not often thought enough in an educational context 
what is industry doing here? So I love that you've highlighted that. And I think probably embedded in that, and I can't really, I would, I'm excited to read your paper. And um, if you're willing to share it beforehand, before publication, I'd love to see it. Um, but I'm curious if there's any space for economics to be pulled out as well, um, because I think industry and economics can be separated and can help um, educators and scholars think through both what's happening structurally within the system and what's happening economically, because we know that economics are so deeply connected to power. So it's just another place for us to think about power. Um, but this is super cool. And I would really love to use this in my own work in the future. So thank you for sharing it in this session today. Thank you. That's also a really great, we were just talking about economics, the economic lens um, the other day. Um, I wonder in the last 60 seconds if um, the, we have another question, a discussion question, which we knew we weren't going to get to all these, but um, our, I wonder thinking about your own, con your own classroom context, if you're in a classroom, um, just thinking about like what other tools, products do you use that perhaps deserve this kind of scrutiny. And in some ways this curriculum is a low hanging fruit. Like, yeah, like Google's the internet awesome curriculum is like, let's talk about it. But are there, um, looking more broadly, like where else can we apply this framework or where could we encourage people to apply this framework? Anybody have and any this is a great that? time to model the answer to your question, Michelle, by acknowledging that we are using a Google product here, yeah. right? That is <laughs> Free. We did not pay money for this, mm -hmm. but we are certainly giving data, a lot of data to Google right now. And that is a conscious choice that we did make deliberately, understanding all of the back and forth and all of the all of the selling of souls that we are doing here. So <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that that's a really great point because it's we can't, I mean, we're at a point in our time and space where we can't not use this, these technologies, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, we're not only are you all using Google, like I say that as if I don't, like let me cast dispersions here, right? But we're here on Zoom and this is all being advertised on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all that sort of stuff. So I would say that it's like using this framework, like not to be, you know, kind of like everything, mm -hmm. right? We, we especially like bringing in what Rachel was just saying about that sort of economic lens and your, your, um, point at your column left column about the industrial lens like this we should be like on all things on all the things on absolutely all the things I do not disagree with that so I want to sadly acknowledge that we're a minute over although I really wish this could be like a four-hour session Jane can let's make time for let's, we have to hear what Jane's gonna say Oh no. <laughs> um, so I just want to say that yes, in 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 collaboration with the other colleagues and people who have who have spoken about and, and, and talked about these things, um, it it we as media educators and scholars know how to search and, and kind of cobble together assignments to make sense. Um, with regard to the use of these platforms in social networking and, and Google and the sundry of products that they offer, these are tools. And what we want to impart to our students and to other colleagues and other educators who are learning and, and growing their media literacy curriculum and, and their repertoire is that we don't want to be victimized by our use of these tools. And we want them to be of service to us and then understand that if these tools are asking us to be in service to them, kind of like how we are in this discussion now, um, that, that, that we understand the reciprocity or the reciprocal nature of that, of that relationship. That's all that we're aiming for. Mm, well, that's a great note to end on. Thank but you. I'll say Jane has ended like quite a few sessions with like mic drops like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> thank you all. I appreciate it. But you know, yeah, thank you for that, Jane. And thank yeah, you yeah. all for, for participating and, um, and, and yeah, and for your feedback. And if you have any other feedback, we would love to hear it because this is something that we want to make tangible and make make into something that teachers can actually use um, in their own work. So thank you all. Thank you. All. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you, Michelle and Samantha. That was fantastic to brainstorm, especially um, with all such um, knowledgeable audience members. <laughs> Um, it made for a great discussion and, and reflection on our own use of these products kind of um, 
you know, in a way we feel forced to use them because um, there aren't great competitors, you know. Um, so thank you for uh, bringing this information to light and that that good framework, you know, that we can use in the future to analyze other um, corporate created or non corporate created media education products. Um, so hopefully we'll see you all at the next, uh, you know, closing session and it'd be great to stay in touch in the future. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Renee and Kaylee for making this session happen. Yes.